or when my husband learned I would not be able to inherit anything from my father, and he shouted at me, What? Is it incapable of being inherited? I have nothing for you. We are in the middle of a divorce. And later, I took my revenge on my new husband and sister. I am Sandra, a 32 years old worker in an office, and my husband is Richard. We have been married for over two years. I was introduced to Richard by a relative and then getting married. My family was wealthy, and my sister Susan had no other children for them to worry about inheriting their money. So that when our relatives Terry and Nate found him, they introduced me. My husband came to live with us in my family house after. My mother died a couple of years ago, and my dad, Hubby, and I lived together. My husband seemed very kind and treated my father well. But a relative who introduced him to me said something concerning just before our wedding. I know I introduced Richard to you, but be careful. He's a bit obsessed with money. I was troubled by this warning so close to our wedding, but I didn't notice any signs of greed from my husband, so we went ahead and got married. Even after marriage, I kept an eye on my husband because of the relative's words, but he didn't seem obsessed with money. However, he did seem curious about my father's wealth, casually asking how much property we had when they were drinking together. My father openly talked about it, so I didn't worry too much. Another thing my husband was interested in was my sister. My sister is five years younger than me, lively and outgoing, in contrast to my calm demeanor. Her relationships with men are quite flashy. She doesn't look like me, and my husband was surprised when he first saw her. Susan is quite different from Sandra, isn't she? Seeing my husband fascinated by my beautiful sister, who was the complete opposite of plain and unnoticeable me, made me feel complicated. The relatives introduced me, a quiet and plain-looking person, because they were worried that if I didn't get married, there would be no one to inherit the family home. I thought there was no need to worry since I had a beautiful sister, but later, I understood why the relatives were concerned. My father spoiled my sister, letting her go to college and even community college after graduation. My sister didn't have any particular goal in attending college or community college. She simply didn't want to work. My mother tried to persuade her to get a job right after college, but my father insisted on letting her go to community college. After graduating from community college, my sister got a job at my father's acquaintances company, but quit after only six months. Her excuse for quitting surprised me. I can't showcase my talents at that company. My mother and I were dumbfounded by my sister, who talked as if she understood everything about the job, even though she hadn't worked for even half a year. But my father believed her and quickly found her another job. After she started working at the new company, my mother fell ill and was hospitalized. When my mother was hospitalized, my sister visited the hospital every day, constantly taking time off work. She eventually quit this job too, saying she needed to take care of my mother, but her care was just sitting in the hospital room, chatting with my mother, or staring at her mobile phone in the waiting room. I had to go to the hospital to change my mother's laundry, and my sister was no help at all. My mother might have been happy to have someone to talk to, but about a month after being hospitalized, her condition worsened to the point where she couldn't even speak. Within two weeks of her condition worsening, my mother passed away. My father and sister were so shaken by the sudden news that they couldn't even prepare for the funeral, so I had to take care of everything. Thanks to the cooperation of our relatives, we were somehow able to send my mother off peacefully. After my mother's death, my sister started a part-time job and moved out to live on her own. Since her part-time earnings weren't enough to cover the rent, my father had been paying for her rent and utilities, and it seems she's using the money she earns for fun, 
Whenever her part-time salary isn't enough, she goes to my father to get some extra money. When my mother was alive, she was strict with my sister, so my father didn't give her any allowance. Now, he gives her as much as she wants. I thought it was no problem if both my father and sister were satisfied with this arrangement. Even after I got married and started living with my husband and my parents' home, my father continued to give my sister an allowance. I didn't notice at the time, but my sister was also asking my husband for money, and he was happily giving it to her. He couldn't say no to my beautiful sister, and he would give her money saying, Keep this a secret from Sandra. If she finds out, she might get jealous. My sister seemed to be living off the money she got from my father and husband, going to her part-time job whenever she felt like it. But that lifestyle didn't last forever. It ended when my father fell ill and had to be hospitalized. I was taking care of my father, visiting the hospital between work, but my sister never showed up. Instead, she started calling me, demanding money. I've been getting money from dad every month, so keep giving it to me. The rent and public utilities are all being deducted from dad's account. She spoke to me in an angry tone. I was surprised by the facts I learned for the first time. I was furious at my sister, who cared only about her life and not about our hospitalized father. I really wanted to hang up on her, but she seemed to be in trouble, so I asked her how much money my father had been giving her every month. How much are you getting from dad every month? Get a full-time job and live on the money you earn, I said. My sister answered grumpily, Stop nagging. I was getting $1,000 a month. Rent is separate, you know. I was dumbfounded by my sister, who proudly told me the amount. I thought that if I kept giving this much money to my grown-up sister every month, she would never feel like working seriously. I didn't think it was a big problem to give money to my sister, as I thought my father would recover soon after being hospitalized. However, my father's condition suddenly worsened, and I hurriedly contacted our relatives. The doctor also told me it was a serious situation, and I was quite shocked. I wanted my husband's support during this time, but he rarely visited the hospital, claiming he was busy with work. Moreover, when he did show up, he would ask me inappropriate questions like, Joseph's inheritance must be huge, right? Since you and your sister are the only heirs, are you going to split it in half? I had no words to respond to my husband, who only talked about the inheritance. I felt both realization and disgust, understanding what the relatives meant when they said my husband was obsessed with money. When I called my sister to tell her about our father's critical condition, she was only concerned about her money. More importantly, make sure you pay me every month. I can't live without that money. The call ended abruptly. I was furious at my sister's words, but I was also concerned about the faint male voice I heard on the other end of the phone. I had a bad feeling recognizing that voice. About a month later, my father passed away, and neither my sister nor my husband were there in his final moments. Having experienced my mother's funeral, I knew how heavy the task of preparing for a funeral could be. Moreover, neither my husband nor my sister helped with anything, and my sister didn't even attend the funeral. My husband did show up, but he disappeared right after, saying he had work. A relative who introduced me to my husband noticed his absence and asked me, Where's Richard? It's strange for the host's husband to not be here, isn't it? I could only respond with a wry smile. He was busy with work, so he went home. The relative signed up my answer, but I felt like sighing too. After my father's funeral ended and I finally had a moment to breathe, my husband asked me with a sleazy grin, Finally, how much did you inherit? Even if you split it in half, you must have inherited a considerable amount, right? Just 
as the relatives had warned me before marriage, my husband seemed consumed with thoughts of my father's inheritance. My sister got $92 million and I got zero. I hadn't even talked to the lawyer yet and I was still trying to process the funeral. Looking at my husband, who was happily talking about the inheritance, I felt like laughing more than getting angry. My husband, who believed my words, immediately yelled, What? You can't inherit any property? I don't need you anymore. Divorce now. I felt the same way, so I shot back, Let's do it. You married me for my father's inheritance in the first place. I'll divorce you, I shouted and thrust the prepared divorce papers at my husband. He seemed a little flustered, as if he had anticipated this, but he signed them anyway. As he left the house after signing the divorce papers, he said, I'll divorce you, who gets zero inheritance, and remarry your sister Susan, who gets the $92 million, and left. I didn't care about his words and immediately proceeded with the divorce. I was able to part ways with my terrible husband. My ex-husband seemed to have started the process of marrying my sister the very next day. A few days later, I received a call from my ex-husband. Do you still believe that story? When will you handle the inheritance? Hurry up and give Susan the $92 million, my ex-husband yelled over the phone. I had been waiting for him to contact me. I didn't want to reach out to my ex-husband, who had left the house on his own. I replied to him in a business-like tone. Let's discuss this at my place next Sunday. I'm preparing for the procedure and will be waiting. Thinking he would receive the inheritance, my ex-husband happily hung up. But I was looking forward to seeing his face when he learned the truth. On the weekend, my ex-husband and sister came to my family home, surprised to find that I had called a lawyer. However, my ex-husband seemed to convince himself. Of course, you need a lawyer when inheriting a large sum of money. Then the lawyer turned to my ex-husband with a puzzled look and began to speak. Before we can discuss the inheritance, there's the matter of Sandra's compensation claim against Richard. He showed my ex-husband several photos, featuring him leaving my sister's house with clear dates marked. The lawyer addressed my ex-husband. These are evidence photos of infidelity before the divorce was finalized, so you must pay compensation. I had heard my ex-husband talking about the inheritance over the phone with my sister and immediately asked the lawyer to investigate his infidelity. Perhaps they thought I was distracted by my father's funeral, but my ex-husband and sister met at her house almost daily, allowing me to gather plenty of evidence. The conversation shifted from inheritance to compensation, leaving my ex-husband and sister dumbfounded. But my ex-husband quickly recovered and retorted, Compensation is nothing compared to the $92 million from the inheritance. I'll pay it right away, he said, as he signed the compensation claim documents handed to him by the lawyer, acting all high and mighty. I confirmed it and told him, Enjoy your life with my sister, who inherited zero. Since you signed, I'll make sure you pay the compensation. The moment they heard inheritance zero, my sister screamed. Why is my mind getting 90? Her husband turned bright red and angrily said, There's no way the inheritance is zero. I won't allow you to take it all for yourself. The lawyer calmly began to explain to the furious pair, Susan is already the stepdaughter of your late mother, and since she was not legally adopted by your late father, there is no legal parent-child relationship. Therefore, Susan cannot inherit your father's estate. I also explained to my confused sister, when our parents remarried, Susan was only about a year old, so you probably don't remember. But I do. I was six years old when our parents remarried, and I remember being happy to suddenly have a sister. I never thought that sister would steal my husband. Both parents were struggling with young children, 
and there was a mediator between them who thought it best for them to remarry. My mother loved me like her real daughter, and my father cherished my sister. Perhaps my father spoiled my sister because she wasn't his biological daughter, and he wanted to be extra careful, although both parents remarried with children. My mother suspected my relatives of targeting my wealthy family's assets and refused to legally adopt my sister. The relatives only recommended marriage proposals to me because they knew I was the only one who could inherit my father's property. If my parents had had a child between them, things might have become even more complicated. But fortunately or unfortunately, they never had one. Now, I understand that my father continued to support my sister financially, even after she became an adult, because he couldn't pass on his inheritance to her. I also never legally adopted my mother, so we weren't legally parent and child, but it never mattered in our daily lives. It seems my parents never told my sister that they were both remarried, and she only learned the truth today. My ex-husband seemed to understand the situation immediately, his face turning from bright red to pale blue. He had not only failed to get the inheritance he was expecting from my sister, but had also signed documents to pay compensation. With a blue face, my ex-husband asked me, was what you said, my sister gets $92 million and I get nothing, a lie? I held back my laughter and replied, of course it's a lie. It's to get back at you for cheating on me behind my back. Besides, there's no way a bankrupt inheritance would be worth $92 million. Even my wealthy father didn't have $92 million in inheritance. Suddenly, my sister, who had been silent, screamed, I've been counting on dad's inheritance and have done a lot of shopping. What will happen to the money dad used to pay me? Will Sandra pay for it? I answered my frightened sister. You have a reliable husband now, so you don't need it anymore, do you? Let Richard support you. My sister stared at her pale-faced ex-husband, who shook his head in response. I've also done a lot of shopping expecting the inheritance, so I can't afford it. Besides, I have to pay compensation, so I'm at my limit. After saying this, my husband suddenly began to apologize deeply to me. Sandra, I'm sorry. It was my fault. Will you forgive me and start over? A lawyer watching this was laughing as he prepared to leave. Where had the arrogant attitude gone when he first came to the house? His deep apology looked ridiculous. After the discussion, my ex-husband and sister left dejectedly, and they soon divorced. For my ex-husband who remarried with the goal of inheriting from my sister. He seemed to have no interest in her since he didn't get the inheritance. He even said to himself that with the payment of compensation to me, he couldn't take care of my sister. My ex-husband had no assets, so it was decided to pay the compensation in installments from his monthly salary. The lawyer advised me that this way I wouldn't miss out. My sister, without the support of our father, had to work part-time every day, but she couldn't make the debt payments and ended up filing for personal bankruptcy. After that, she even gave up her condominium and disappeared, and no one knows where she went. My father had been supporting my sister financially, but by spoiling her like that, she became unable to work seriously. Afterward, I started living alone in my family home, and some relatives talked about introducing me to a potential marriage partner that I declined. I don't want to be introduced to another man like my ex-husband, so this time I want to find a marriage partner on my own. <laughs>